Um, sometimes I get it as a question, you know, what is a special tree that I need to have in my landscape in North Dakota? And to me, I think one of the answers, you have, you have to consider a birch tree. Why? Because birch has amazing bark. And bark in North Dakota is so important because, for goodness sakes, our trees are leafless for most of the year. So, like, why should we care about, like, a crab apple that blooms for two weeks? Care about something that has great bark all winter long. And so consider a birch tree. So now we got an expert to tell you about birch trees. Greg Morganson has been an urban forester for decades. He is a top researcher from this nationally acclaimed Woody Plant Improvement Program, and we're so fortunate to have him here tonight. So, Greg, please welcome to the forums. Thank you, Tom. Go ahead and advance this to the first slide. Well, I kind of wanted to talk about birch tonight because um, one of the things, if you live anywhere in the central U.S., the northern U.S., you have probably tried a birch in your yard. We're not all successful at it, and I'll talk about that, but birch is probably one of the most popular landscape trees that, that we can plant. So I'm going to go through a little bit about it. Um, birch, why they do well, why they don't do well, some of the things we can do to make sure they do perform up to their best, and then maybe go into some of the species and cultivars after that. So there's, there's many, many cultivars of uh, birch and uh, species in a birch. Not all birch are created equal, so there's many, many different uh, species out there, and a number of them we can use in our landscapes here in North Dakota. They offer a very striking addition to the landscape. And I want to say when they're sited and planted properly, where the climate is suitable for their optimal growth. And that's really the key to this, where they're planted correctly in a suitable environment. Uh, Well-cared for spruce and home landscape uh, provide attractive seasonal interest, as Tom mentioned, the bark through the winter, and, and also all the traditional tree benefits of, of wind protection, shading of a home, just, uh, just making a living environment a little bit better. Um, as we've uh, progressed in birch about the last 30, 40 years, we've actually started doing a lot of different changes, selecting for plant form to make them a little more adaptable to landscapes. Uh, there's, there's upright forms, there's small forms, the old traditional European weeping uh, birch is still in use, um, hopefully not for long, but still in use. So there's a lot of different forms you can place in a varying sized landscape. A lot of different foliage uh, textures and colors, got everywhere from green to purple foliage. Uh, generally, most of them turn a yellow to brilliant yellow in the fall, so you've got that extra, extra season of interest there as they start to shut down in the fall. And um, the bark on them, and Tom mentioned bark, there's so much variation in the bark of birch. Uh, I always thought a really neat planting would be to not just have one species of birch, but maybe have five, six different species in a planting and mix up that uh, bark texture in them. They're, they're everywhere from brilliant white to salmon colored to highly exfoliating. So there's a lot of different bark textures that you can choose from. So we have this nice birch in our yard. It's grown for a while and then suddenly over a couple of years it's dead. So what happened? What happened to my beautiful birch? Well, most birch are planted outside of their optimal growing conditions. And uh, birch under stress uh, run into all kinds of problems. So the result is decline in depth. In the picture here, you're going to have moisture stress. It's planted in a dry spot, um, high soil pH. It looks like it's in a western environment with a higher soil pH. You have reflected heat from that street. One thing you don't want is a lot of reflected heat on a birch. Plant competition, and these all start to contribute to decline in, in birch, and really is the problem with, with uh, their decline in eventual death. One thing we need to remember about birch, um, and, and we use them, we use them in our landscapes, but they're really far out of their native environment when we put them in those landscapes. They're naturally found growing in, in uh, the northern US, Canadian provinces, mountain forests, pretty evenly moist shaded cool soils, cool is a key there, 
and slightly acidic to acidic soil pHs. And they generally grow on sunny sites where their crowns are sunny with a similar site requiring species. So there may be other trees or shrubs mixed in that's like the same conditions. And there's minimal ground vegetation. There's not a lot of brome grass or turf grass. And the trunks are often shaded for a portion of the day. Their root systems generally are always shaded for most of the day. So we're really trying to move birch into an unnatural environment in our landscape. So where do we plant birch? We take birch, we take them into our landscape, we put them out in the front of a lawn, uh, generally just grow them by themselves, turf up to the trunk, um, unless you do a little bit of control on it. Uh, heavy, heavy turf, light, shallow watering instead of, free, uh, instead of less frequent, deep watering. And they may grow for a while and, and start doing very well, but at some point they start to decline. And the tree in the picture on the left there already has um, dead stems up in the top of there, probably from bronze birch borer, which we'll talk about. Um, to, uh, the turf to the trunk of the tree is probably one of the biggest things that, that end up causing a lot of damage. Birch are very thin barked. And so we run around them with mowers, we run around them with string trimmers, and we eventually damage that bark to the point that the trees really no longer function properly. So in the landscape, that sets us up for a number of problems. Um, bronze birch borer being the number one. I'm sure you've all heard of bronze birch borer. We've got some lesser problems, birch leaf miner, which is cosmetic, but can really cause some uh, severe defoliation in a, in a heavy infestation. And if you're here in the, in the valley or some of the other places out west with high pH, you get this yellow uh, chlorosis on the foliage. So those are all indications that you're going to have problems with your birch. Uh, if anything else we learned tonight, we'll learn about bronze birch borer and why this, why is, this is such a problem. Uh, you've all heard of emerald ash borer from Asia. Bronze birch borer is its close cousin from North America. Very closely related species. Emerald ash borer in ash, bronze birch borer in birch. So we have our own borer that's native to our, our country and has been here for millennium. So our, our species have evolved with that. Um, the North American species that have evolved with bronze birch borer have, and I, I kind of group this three ways, poor to fair to very good tolerance to bronze birch borer. Uh, Bronze birch borer tolerance is species dependent and it's also population within species dependent. And then European and most Asian species, which did not evolve with bronze birch borer, are very susceptible to bronze birch borer infestation and death. One of the symptoms of bronze birch borer, very similar again to emerald ash borer, is the D shaped exit holes on the trunk of the trees. So if you see those on there, those D shaped holes, then you know you've got bronze birch borer in there. So oftentimes when I drive around, you see a lot of birch, uh, such as the birch on the left with the whole top beginning to die back. And that's bronze birch borer infestation. Uh, again, planted in a, in a lawn situation, sawed up to it. Um, we may think we're doing pretty good care for it. And other trees like an elm or an ash or an oak would perform well there. But, but birch out in that full sun environment with a warm root system just does not perform well. Again, you see the D-shaped exit holes, and then also you start seeing woodpecker damage in there. The woodpeckers know that those uh, larvae are in there, so they'll go in there and start tearing up those trunks too. And then eventually you've got death of that tree. So how can we avoid all this? Well, the first one is to plant tolerant species and cultivars. Avoid the European and Asian species. We all like the European uh, cut leaf weeping birch. Unfortunately, if you were to take all the birches and say which one is the most susceptible to bronze birch borer, it'd be the European uh, weeping birch. Uh, plant in an optimal planting site, mulched, root shaded area, north or northeast side of your home. Avoid the real open, dry, full sun planting signs on the sites on the south and southwest. So if you can shade those roots during the day and keep them cool and keep them mulched, you go a long ways towards improving the health of that tree. Avoid damage by mowers and string trimmers. Whoever's doing your lawn care, make sure that they stay away from them and try to have a mulched area around there so you totally avoid it. Birch have a very thin bark on it, and once you damage that, that, that tree, uh, 
that area where you've uh, removed that bark is no longer functioning for transport in there. One thing, avoid granular herbicides. People like to spread weed and feed all over their lawn. You're actually spreading 2,4-D granules all over in there that can leach into that root zone. Avoid those type of materials around them. I would say avoid them around all trees, but, but birch can be very sensitive to it. Keep your pruning to a minimum. You don't want to go in and prune a lot of wood out of that tree. Um, just do some uh, general maintenance type trimming. And if you can, leave those limbs lower where it shades the trunk, shades the uh, uh, soil around it a little bit. And a good thing to remember, the warmer, drier, and more exposed the site, vigor will decline and stress will occur. It's just pretty much a given on, on birch. So a little bit about uh, site-wise, you know, try to water deeply during dry periods. I mean, people like to uh, irrigate their lawns. They do a lot of shallow uh, everyday irrigation or every other day that's really not getting down in that root zone area and then getting that uh, water level that they need. So avoid the real shallow ones, maintain a cool root run. Mulch, if you can mulch out to the drip line is ideal, especially on birch. If you can keep that mulch area wide, that's the best way you're gonna uh, keep those in good health. Additional birch problems, chlorosis. Uh, I just took this uh, picture last summer, actually I was taken, or summer before last, taking pictures of elm. And what it shows here though, you can see how well that elm is doing on a boulevard planting here in Fargo. To the left of it is a birch, to the right of it is a red maple. Those bright yellow trees are not adapted to our clay high pH soils or the pH soils uh, further west in the state. So if you don't have a site to plant a birch on, don't plant a birch. Select a tree that's gonna do well in that area. Sapsucker damage. If any of you have birch, you've probably seen this. Uh, Sapsuckers are a woodpecker. They'll drill around and around that tree, and they'll actually drill hundreds of thousands of holes in there. And at this point, they're not looking for anything inside the tree. They actually wound it so that uh, that tree oozes sap, and then they can basically lick that up. They don't suck it out of there, but they lick it up. The sap on the birch is sweet, and they like that. As I said, the bark is thin. So that's one of the trees they really go for, is those thin bark <coughs> trees. Um, basically, at this point, it, it is hard to recommend what to do for it. Uh, people have hung snakes and owls and, and metal pans and tangle foot uh, all around them, and, and uh, the uh, sap suckers uh, still will go to the tree. The best thing I think I have heard is to take three or four uh, bamboo stakes or some kind of wooden wooden rods or poles and tie them around the trunk of that tree so it <coughs> interrupts their feeding pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you can interrupt that pattern of the bird going around the tree, you want to do that. <coughs> Woodpeckers are also protected migratory birds, so you really can't do anything otherwise to get rid of them. What to plant and what not to plant. And uh, as I said, avoid European white birch and cultivars of that, such as the pendula or the weeping one and the cut leaf weeping. They're very, very highly preferred by the bronze birch borer. Um, there's purple leaf cultivars that are very attractive in the landscape. And uh, I, I know I see them more and more in the landscape, but one thing to remember, they are either that species on some of them or they're hybrids with that species, the European white birch. So they're also gonna be very susceptible to bronze birch borer. The North American species that have evolved with bronze birch borer have um, some low tolerance to very high tolerance in certain species and cultivars. And examples of some of our native species include paper birch, the gray birch, river birch, uh, yellow birch, and sweet birch. And I'll talk about a few of those here. I think we're all familiar with paper birch. It's another one of the white barked birches. Um, it has some exfoliating bark on it. It's native across the whole northern tier of the U.S. This is a birch that's native to North Dakota, one of our two native birches. And uh, paper birch and then the western uh, uh, Rocky Mountain birch are also native to North Dakota. But paper is found in areas across North Dakota. And it has some tolerance to bronze birch borer until it's placed under very stressful growing conditions. But generally, birch, uh, the, of the birch species, paper birch 
has more tolerance to bronze birch borer than many of the other white barked birches. Um, populations from the northern <clears throat> Midwest are generally those that are best suited for North Dakota conditions. We don't want to take a paper birch from New England or from northern Canada and plant it here and expect it to do well under our conditions. So North Dakota, Minnesota, Montana type populations are best. There's a number of paper birch cultivars that we have in testing out at our horticulture farm. Uh, the one pictured here is uh, Renaissance Reflection, does very well. It's somewhat pyramidal, very nice dark green foliage, bright white bark. Uh, so it's kind of one of them that, that we tend to recommend a little bit. Uh, Avalanche is another one. And uh, again, very nice white bark, pyramidal. Seems to be very, very susceptible to uh, sapsucker damage, but uh, seems to be doing well. Chickadee is a very upright, narrow paper birch. Uh, one of the paper birch that, uh, that has gotten uh, national, I guess, recognition and is being widely used across the northern U.S. is Prairie Dream Paper Birch. And this is available in, in most nurseries in the area, garden centers. And uh, this is a selection out of the NDSU Woody Plant Program. And it originated from a birch population in the Kildare Mountains of North Dakota. So the Kildare Mountains, well north of Dickinson, you're out in a stressful environment with low humidity. Uh, this tree growing in that area has adapted to those conditions, this, these population of birch. And so uh, Dr. Dale Herman, our previous uh, head of the Woody Plant Program, grew a population of uh, birch from the Kildare Mountains and selected Prairie Dream out of that. Very bright white bark, uh, attractive, grown as a multi-stem, as most white barked birches are, and uh, does, does very well in our area. And it's pretty readily available now also. I want to talk a little bit about river birch. Uh, river birch is probably one of the most widely used landscaping birches in the U.S., but it tends to be used further east of us and further south. Uh, for two reasons. One was cold hardiness within a lot of the populations, and the second one is they tend to have iron chlorosis on high pH soils. So we've got two problems that, that we had to overcome there. Uh, there are a number of paper birch that are around and growing. I do see them. Um, some do well and some do not. Again, I'm going to put a little plug in for one of our releases. This should be available in 2019. Uh, this is one called Northern Tribute River Birch. Very shaggy, exfoliating, uh, whitish, cream color to salmon color bark, full size tree. And as you can see the foliage in the picture, this is growing on a pH of about 8.2. So it's got uh, tolerance to higher pH soils. And again, this came out of the, the birch program at NDSU. Dr. Herman um, had found or had heard of a tree a, a river birch tree in all places, Dickinson, North Dakota, which is probably one of the most unusual places you would find a river birch, uh, grew again a seedling population from this and selected Northern Tribute River Birch out of there. There's been three of the major <coughs> landscape ornamental nurseries <coughs> get this tree into tissue culture and they're now in their production programs and should have that available in 2019. Asian white birch, for a while this was kind of touted as a replacement for European white birch, very cold hardy, well adapted to North Dakota, uh, high pH, uh, soil pH tolerance, but it was found to be uh, susceptible under stressful planting conditions. So again, we go back to that proper siting and care for them, and there are several, uh, several platyphylla or Asian white birch that are available. Uh, again, one of the birch out of the NDSU program that's kind of taken the birch world by storm across the country is the Dakota Pinnacle, a very upright, compact birch. Uh, does very well in the landscape, 40 to 50 foot in height. Very nice, deep green color, bright white bark, a very uniform, predictable shape to it, and it's pretty widely available. So of the, the platyphylla uh, birches, Dakota Pinnacle is probably now the go-to uh, tree. There's one out of Canada now, out of uh, Jeffries, working with Bailey Nurseries in Minnesota. It's called Parkland Pillar. And basically what this is, is a, it's called just a tissue culture variant 
out of a pop tissue culture population of Dakota Pinnacle Birch, one was noticed that was very columnar in form instead of the broadly columnar, it was narrow, narrowly columnar. So that was selected and named as Parkland Pillar. Very, very narrow upright birch. So you're going to have to have a have a spot where a very narrow tree will will uh, be the tree to plant. I want to talk about a little bit of other birch possibilities. There are other species. Um, yellow birch has a huge range to the east of us. Uh, it's a uh, comes quite a ways across Minnesota, um, all the whole tier of northern states. Generally not used as much in a landscape situation because it doesn't have the bright white bark. It's got kind of a yellowish, uh, golden yellowish exfoliating bark. Uh, this is a tree that's growing in Fargo here, bright yellow, full color. Kind of a nice uh, nor <coughs> ornamental birch. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat seizes up here. And then along that same line, and I'll talk about some other species, but I'm going to talk about some in our program at Absaraca. We have a uh, have had and have a birch evaluation program. We uh, have a large planting of birch. Uh, a number of them do well. A number of them are in various stages of decline and death. We have a high population of bronze birch borer, which we want uh, all the birch out there. We want them to be subjected to the worst of the worst. So. You can see some trees do very well, others do not. I wanted to mention Korean birch, Betula castata, because this is kind of has been touted a little bit as having some resistance to bronze birch borer. Uh, in fact, some reports even says it has good resistance to bronze birch borer. But uh, Korean birch does very well for us. Uh, those of you that like to grow things from seed, if you can grow a tomato seed, you can grow a birch seed. So you can go to some of the seed companies. Uh, F.W. Schumacher, Sheffield Seed, they have packets of some of these bird species. And, and certainly give them a try. It's a beautiful tree. Another one along that same line, but with even uh, more exfoliating bark, is the Hurrian Larch. Um, it's kind of a smaller tree. Uh, again, it has been said to have resistance to bronze birch borer. Very pH adaptable, very exfoliating bark on it. A really, really pretty plant. So. Again, you know, if you come across seed of that in a packet, give it a try. We have another selection out of our program, uh, two of them actually that I've released pretty recently. Uh, generally, we think of birch as trees, tall trees, anywhere from 20, 30, 40, 50 foot tall. This is one called Cinnamon Curls. This is a Betula castata, again, a Korean birch. And at about 30 years of age, this birch is nine foot by nine foot. So very small, fits in a very small landscape, very attractive exfoliating bark. Uh, we've got one nursery that now has it in tissue culture. So hopefully down the road here, not too long from now, we'll be able to get this birch and use it in our landscape. But uh, to have a very small birch in the landscape with this type of bark that's hardy here, it will be a real plus for us. We just released another birch that we're getting out into the trade, and it's called Tianchen birch. It's from northern China. Very, very columnar in form, very drought tolerant, very pH tolerant. So uh, we hope this gets picked up by the nurseries also, and we can, we can get that out. But so from all this, there's a lot of birch species you can grow. You just need to provide the suitable conditions for them, those that are adapted to your area. So. Thanks a lot, and if you have some questions, I'll try to answer them. Okay, thank you, Greg. <clears throat> okay, we got a, good, a lot of good questions here. How about uh, just give us a ballpark? We got a healthy weepy <coughs> birch. Okay, so let's assume it's under a right, the proper environment. So, how long is this birch going to live? Is a birch a long-lived tree or short-lived tree in general? <coughs> birch, the kind of the. Uh, a rule of thumb is if it's 40 to 50 years old, then you've done a really good job. So um, if you can keep it in good shape, you know, I mean, and they can certainly live longer than that. Uh, we know they can live longer than that. But, uh, yeah, it's, if you're doing it right and just taking care of it like that, I, I guess I wouldn't change anything and just keep, yeah. keep going. What do you think about rock? Is that a good mulch around a bird's tree? Um, I guess I don't have a big preference between rock and uh, wood mulch. Uh, rock is fine with me. 
Uh, I know some people don't like it. The biggest plus is it doesn't blow away. And in our climate, if you're exposed to 60 mile an hour winds, then you've got all that bark or rain washing out in your yard. So I guess I haven't had any problems with it. And in fact, I see birch doing very well in some small rock mulch plantings. How about the heat buildup from the mulch? Yeah, I, I, I have heard that, and I, I, just, I guess I just haven't tested that. <clears throat> but, uh, okay, great. Um, what's the best paper birch for a higher pH? The best paper birch right now to go to your garden center and buy is prairie dream paper birch. Is, is that better than a yellow birch? Under uh, high pH soil, depending on high pH, I don't know what the pH is, up to about eight or so you can grow yellow birch. Above that, prairie dream will grow up eight to eight three pH in your soil. So why would it grow a, a yellow birch instead of prairie dream? Why would you? Yeah. Why don't I just get a Depends prairie on, dream? Well, yeah, you could. The one thing is Prairie Dream is a white bark birch, yellow birch is a yellow, coppery, creamy color coppery. birch. So both of them are very attractive trees. I guess I wouldn't limit myself to one, one species or cultivar. How about, uh, how far do birch borers travel? And this person doesn't know of any other birch trees at least five blocks in any direction. Well, they're a flying insect. Yeah. If, we, if we go by emerald ash borer, which is a quarter to half a mile, then I would think uh, bronze birch borer would be about the same. I'll find a sad birch tree. Well, what they do, yeah, and, and what I should mention here, when birch decline, they release, they release a chemical. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, bronze birch borer zeroes in on that chemical that's released by a declining birch. Greg, you like... Uh understory plantings are like hostas in the mulch under the birch? Sure. Yeah, understory plantings, um, non-competitive understory plantings, especially hosta with large leaves to shade the soil would, would be good. You know, you mentioned starting some of these uh, exotic birches from seed. Mm -hmm. So like, come on, man, what kind of time frame are we talking about to get to a four-foot tree? Like, is that for my grandchildren or what? No. No, okay. Let's go. Do you want me to talk about seed a little bit? Seed. Birch, birch How seed long is. Four foot yeah. tree? How many years? Okay. Birch seed is really easy to, uh, to collect, treat, and germinate. If you want to grow up your own tree, grab those uh, female catkins in the fall when the seeds are shattering, put them in a baggie, mix them with some damp, uh, damp potting soil, damp peat moss, throw them in your refrigerator, keep it damp, bring them out in the spring, put them in a flat, cover lightly. Uh, put something over the top just to, just to maintain moisture but let light through. They'll germinate in a week to 14 days. You can just prick them out of there like you would any vegetable plant. They should grow anywhere from one to two foot the first year. Uh, to They should be anywhere two to four foot by the second year. Birch grow very rapidly, very, very rapidly. Really? Yeah. Four foot tree in two years. In two years. My right. goodness. Um, can you get seeds of the cinnamon curls birch tree, or is that just via tissue culture? Um, cinnamon curls, no, at this point. Um, you can't, that is a variety of castata, and I'm assuming they want the small version, but castata, betula castata seed is readily available from seed dealers. Can, is aspen a good substitute for a birch tree? I think aspen is actually a worse <laughs> substitute for a birch tree. They tend to sucker. They are uh, subject to a lot of canker diseases uh, and decline. They're attractive in the landscape <laughs> for a while, but uh, if you do not maintain them and keep those suckers mowed down, you'll have a grove taken over your yard. <clears throat> what do we got here? Okay, the bronze birch borer, you mentioned as a major threat. What, if you think your birch tree has bronze birch borer, what do you do about it? Get somebody out there to confirm that. If you have a uh, local uh, uh, garden center person, certified arborist, make sure that that's what you have and then what, what control they would uh, offer for that. I'm not into chemical control on trees. I like to plant trees that we're not going to need that on. Um, but there are some chemicals, systemic chemicals, that birch can be treated with. If the infestation is light, if it's a heavy infestation, 
do your cut at ground level and, and rid yourself of the problem. But light infestation, there are some systemic insecticides. So we'll see the damage starting from the top of the tree because the vascular system has been destroyed by the borer. Right, in that area. So the top of the tree gets the last drink of water. So yeah, you'll see the symptoms there. And I was taught that if you see more than one third of the tree died back, then it's hard to save the tree because the vascular system has been so much destroyed. And there are insecticides, systemic insecticides, imatoclopred, very advanced tree and shrub insect control is the magic cure for that. Um, <clears throat> does clump birch do well in eastern North Dakota? Yeah, clump birch, uh, clump birch really is birch in a clump of whatever species it may be. But yeah, birch do well pretty much statewide, depending on the proper species and the proper site. Yep. Now, you said that northern tribute river birch does not show chlorosis even at 8.2 pH. Correct, because that soil that's sampled amazing. right underneath that, yes. That's a breakthrough for river birch. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's a that's a, that's a breakthrough. Yep. Because uh, that's an amazing. Yeah. You know, when, when Northern Tribute does come out, it, it's, a, it's a pretty special tree. And also the one thing about river birch is they are almost totally immune to bronze birch borer. They do not produce the chemical under stress that attracts birch borer. So uh, right. if you want a tree that it will not get bronze birch for, the river birch are one of those. And that, so. could take, that can take the heat. That's why mm -hmm. the river birch is so special. It right. can take the heat, doesn't get the bore, but you can't take a, a high pH, pH of your northern yeah. tribute. It's an amazing advancement. So fingers crossed, 2019 wow. will start 2019 seeing some. It's going to be available. Hopefully. Yes. Okay, look forward to it. Um, well, so any other questions out there? Um, <clears throat> Here's a question. If birch are close together in a clump, will the trunks tend to girdle themselves on the inside of the clump? Not necessarily. Not unless there's a lot of movement in there. And birch naturally grow as a clump anyway. So I, I guess I would say no. I have not seen that personally. Okay, let's see. I, I buy a prairie dream birch from a local garden center. How many years until it reaches about 30 feet tall? Under mm, good yeah, I would say 12, 14 years. Okay. Under good conditions, they grow. They can grow two to three foot a year sometimes under very good conditions. Okay, that's you know you mentioned about uh, herbicides. How uh, you shouldn't put granular herbicides under the root system of a birch tree. Mm -hmm. Well, how far does the root system of a well, tree that's, go? Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's your thing. whole yard. Yeah. That's yeah. All your whole front yeah. yard. I know some people like them, so, but I'm just saying keep away <clears throat> from them. So. That's right. A, a, <laughs> a dandelion is okay. Think of your birch tree. Limit your applications right. out once a year, maybe in fall. Okay. Any more last questions here? Okay. That's great. Good. Thank, Thank you, you, Greg. Outstanding. Yep.